Sponsored by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. TrueTechTools.com. What's up, YouTube? So, I am uh, headed over to that geothermal job. I got my equipment and material delivered yesterday and I haven't had a chance to get over there and you know confirm that the material and equipment is uh, in good condition not damaged or anything like that so I thought I would go over there this evening and just check it out maybe actually give you a bit of a um, overview of what I'm planning to do and um, show you what's up in the attic since I haven't actually done much of that other than a still picture on the previous video where we visited um, I'm gonna be getting into the start of the job on Saturday and I plan to you know show you guys that Anyway, I'm headed over there, and we'll be back in a minute. Hello, fat cat. stuff. <clears throat> Looks like we've got our condenser, our air handler, some unistrut, plywood, drain pan, 2x4s, some ductwork and boxes, drain line, pretty standard stuff. I'll take you upstairs and show you what's going on up there. So here is our current air handler. It's tiny. We've got three returns. One of them is a double flex return. And then over here we got one supply. Obviously there's not a whole lot of room in this space and putting a larger air handler could be problematic. So we're gonna relocate this sucker up into the normal attic. So, we've got two ducts that go back here. This one, which is obviously nicely spliced. And then the one that goes down there, looks like it's got a great splice on it too. Got a return in that room. The main return here. And then this trunk line down the center. So my plan is to take the air handler and hang it from the rafters with all thread, sammies, and unistrut right down here in the middle, 
hang it high enough that we can get the drain back down to where it is coming from with the current air handler and then we'll have a long return plenum five foot return plenum and then a ten foot supply plenum um, that 16 inch return will probably stay back there the other return will probably reroute to keep floor space and then we'll have the two duct return that was in that closet and the plan with that is to cut that in somewhere in here I believe it's in here um, probably over this side of that center beam um, so that we can eliminate those two pipes having to actually extend those the supply duct will be cut off out of that chase because all of the supply is going to be up here and that return duct will also be cut out of the chase so we'll have room to run a refrigerant pipe and the drain line down that hole um, and then this six by six by six splice will be eliminated with a cube that's going to feed the four ducts on this end of the house we got three here and then this one we'll have a cube over here splitting those about as evenly as possible most of the other ducting that comes around over here will come off of the plenum most of the ducting that goes back over here will also come off of the plenum and then we'll have another cube where those two ducts go over that wall for that end of the building and all the other stuff will be eliminated um, this trunk is going to come out we'll hang the unit with a drain pan and then run the refrigerant piping up this way um, and then the plywood that I got is actually for logical access to this space for servicing in the future right now it's a rafter walk and uh, kind of dangerous to expect someone to um, do this just to service the equipment later on. I've got four sheets of 4x8 plywood and um, we'll be reworking this stuff to allow good access and then a walkway that goes that direction. All of the flex ducts are going to come up high so that we can tie them into the plenum which will also be high. I think we've got plenty of lighting and uh, lots of working space. I mean, I'm 5'8", five, 5'9", five, and I'm able to stand up for the most part until I have to go under these blockers here, those beams. So that's the plan on all of this. And... Um, the other thing I'm going to do while I'm here is go ahead and double check the water piping on the uh, units in the crawl space so that uh, I know what material I need to get for that project. So what I'm thinking on the water loop, I'm going to swing this up and take the water loop return along the side of the beam back that way so that it runs down this beam all the way to the return from the other unit. I'm not planning on changing the configuration of the package unit. I'll just 
tap on to the end of the elbow. Let me get over there. All right, so my thought is right here, just extend that, cut it off and extend it so that it comes over to the beam down here and relocate this return line over to that beam so that it goes back. And then all of this for the first split unit or the split unit for upstairs will be eliminated so that this pipe feeds off of the whole thing or feeds this and then I'll tee in down back over there I'll crawl back over there I'll tee into the inlet water line come across and I'm going to set the new condenser right here where close to where the refrigerant pipe goes up I don't see any reason to have it way over there at all so that the refrigerant pipe will just come down and hit my new unit um, this box contains a relay I haven't opened it up yet but it, it contains a relay for the water loops or the water solenoid and I plan to relocate that solenoid to the center beam where the return line is and I'll keep it on a single solenoid system I don't think it's necessary to actually have two solenoids because it'll keep the water stacked up in both units regardless and at least that way we can run uh, the piping in a more secure location so it doesn't do all this garbage and try to clean it up a little bit I think what I might do is something similar to what they did on their in and out is actually have a ball valve between the two so that I can split them and flush the line independent of the um, coax coil don't know that that's a hundred percent necessary but just in case I think I'm gonna do that I don't know if I'll be able to reuse any of the ball valves that they've got over there. Um, I may be able to reuse some of the rubber hosing, though I have new fixtures for everything that I'm, the, the new condenser. But if I can, and it doesn't make a whole lot of trouble, I may have use to just re relocate and reuse those ball valves so that I can isolate each unit on the loop so that's the plan for now This is where the exit water loop comes out, right here, and I'm not 100% sure where it goes, but as I remember, a couple of years ago, he showed me where it outlets out here in the woods. If I estimate that it shoots a straight line, it should be out here somewhere. But I don't remember for certain where it is. I may be all wrong, but I don't remember. Anyway, doesn't really matter. That's the plan and the preview of the. What are we calling this? Project Rodnizer. So we'll get some more footage as we go.
and take you guys along for the ride. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, you can use coupon code RARVID and get $10 off your purchase at TrueTechTools.com or the coupon code RARIDVM for $10 off your IDVM 510 meter. Thanks to the 100 Watt Vipers for allowing me to use their music also. You can search for my Facebook group at HVAC with Stephen Reardon or follow me on Twitter at Juvenile77. Thanks for watching. Troubles on